that you can make a little noise. Well, hello there. This is Father Adam again, and I am overjoyed to be able to have this time to reflect on the richness of the Word of God in our life. The Word of God is living and it's penetrating our hearts like a dagger to change our hearts, to remove those hearts of stone and to give us hearts for love alone. And I'd like to reflect with you now about Mary, whom the church calls the model of discipleship, the model of what our faith should look like. And Mary is 12 years old when she's told that she will be the mother of of Jesus, when she's told by the angel Gabriel that she will be the mother of God. Can you imagine a 12 year old girl being told that she's given this mission? And that's why Mary, Mary says, But how can this be? And in fact, the Bible here says in the first chapter of Luke that she's greatly troubled at the news that is told her by the angel. And what does the angel tell her? Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Do not be afraid, Mary. Why? Because the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And that word is in the Bible is a very deep, deep sense of God being with us. The way that God is with us is like a husband is with his wife in a very deep and profound way. That God Im embeds himself in us and is present to us. The Lord is with you, Mary. Be not afraid. That phrase, be not afraid, is present 365 times. In the rich word of God. You can find that phrase there over again. It's the same phrase that Joseph heard. It's the same phrase that the prophets heard. It's the same phrase that the apostles heard, that Paul heard. All the saints heard it in their hearts. Be not afraid. I am with you. Everything is going to be okay. And Mary hears that. It wasn't easy. Her life was not easy. Her life was full of pain, but she kept remembering as she went through her struggles, her problems, her issues, that God was with her and that it was all going to be okay. And now, in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, this is what we have to remind ourselves over and over again, that God is with us and that it will all be fine. Here we have the image of Our Lady of Częstochowa, the Black Madonna, and she has two slashes on her face. Why does she have two slashes on her face? They've tried to repair this image many, many times. Artists have tried to re repair it, and they couldn't. Why? Because those two slashes represent pain. That Mary is pained. Because Mary, just like Jesus in our life, in all the saints, come to be with us, to accompany us. Mary comes to be with us. I want to read with all of you what happened uh, after Mary is told that she will be the mother of God. And the angel says to her, and behold, your kinswoman, Elizabeth, in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Are you hearing that? Nothing. Nothing is impossible for God. This coronavirus is not more powerful than God. God will take care of it. Where is your trust? We have to trust in God. Our life is not about believing in God. Anybody can believe in God. Even the devil believes in God. The devil knows the creed better than you. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. He can, you know, maker of heaven and earth, he can recite the creed better than you can. He knows that God exists. 
And what does that do to you that you know that God exists? Has it changed your life? The only way it will change your life is if your belief system leads you to trust. Because the devil doesn't trust God. The devil trusted himself. We trust God. And those who trust God, the Bible says, will never be disappointed. We trust God that it will all be okay. And we say over and over again, Jesus, I trust in you. It's not easy, but I trust in you. And my trust, because my faith is about trusting in God. And when I trust in God, in my faith, I'm able to relax. That is the definition of faith. The ability to relax. That I relax because God is with me. Like God was with Mary. And like God was with Joseph. And like God was with all the prophets. With Moses. With Abraham. With King David. With the apostles. With Paul the apostle. And like God is with you. So we relax in the midst of everything that we are going through because God is with us and nothing is impossible for God. And we trust that this too shall pass. That's how we live. We live relaxed that this too shall pass. And yeah, there is pain. Of course there's pain. It's like Mary sustained pain in her life. It wasn't easy to see your own child die in such a horrible death. In fact, do you know how Jesus died? Jesus died, really, from the coronavirus, if you think about it. It's just that it's that same type of death. How does a person die on the cross? Do they die from hanging there? No. They die because their lungs get filled up with fluids. And slowly, slowly, they drown in their own fluids. Don't you think God knows what this is all about? He's been there. He's been in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. He's been there. That's what the Bible says. You think that I haven't been there? I've been there before you. I go before you always. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Where you are, I have been. Where you are going, I have been. He's been there. He knows what it's like. And he's sustaining us and he's taking care of us. God did not allow his son Jesus Christ to meet his end on the cross because he resurrected him. God took care of his son and you are God's son. You are God's daughter. You are God's child and God is taking care of you. God is taking care of you and your family. He's been there. Mary goes in haste, we hear. That's why we we love Mary. I, I, I absolutely love Mary because the Bible here says that when Mary heard that her kinswoman, her relative Elizabeth, is with child, Mary said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. What does that mean? I am the servant of the Lord, Mary said. Now remember, she is our model. Be it done to me according to your word. I am the servant. What's the best way to deal with this particular situation in our life? What's the best way to deal with the coronavirus situation in our life? This pandemic? What's the best way to deal with your anxiety, with your depression, with all the stuff that, that you're going through? Get yourself busy like Mary did. Do something for others. What did she say? Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. I am the servant of the Lord. Are you God's servant? You know, it's one thing to say uh, that I follow Jesus. We are all followers of Jesus. Those who uh, know God follow God. 
If you know Jesus, you follow him. Uh, how do um, let me put it? Let me put it in this way. Okay. Uh, all of you know God because you've heard about him. You've heard of Jesus. Uh, you maybe go to church. Uh, you pray. You know him. So you follow him. But those who love God, serve him. Mary loved God. That's why she doesn't say, I am the follower of God. She says, I am the handmaid of the Lord. I am the servant of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. And she served. What's the best way right now for you to serve? Get yourself busy. Serving people. Write a letter to someone. Write in a positive email to somebody. A positive note. Send positive messages. That's serving, lifting people up. Call somebody and lift them up. Serve by being generous. Open up your checkbook to serve with those who may need it. You, you all go to restaurants, so you know wait, waiters and waitresses who may not be working right now. You know they work on tips. Share with them. Call the restaurant and ask for the name of the, of the waitress or the waiter. And if you have more, share. For it is in giving that we receive, not in taking, in giving. The best way for us to deal with this current situation is to become generous, to become servants to one another. That's what Mary did. Servants. Now, you know, when um, I was in the seminary and every single Saturday we would go to the um, homeless shelter to serve food to the homeless people. And I was driving with one of my friends in the car and we're driving to the homeless shelter and all of a sudden my phone rings and so I answer it and it was another friend and he says, oh, what are you doing? And he says, oh, me and uh, so-and-so, we're going to the homeless shelter to feed the homeless. And at that, my friend stops the car. And I said, what did you do that for? Because he yanked the phone out of my hand and he turned it off and he says, he says to me, he says, you are not going to the homeless shelter to feed the homeless. The homeless are people. You feed dogs and you feed cats and you feed your gerbil and your hamster. You feed animals. You serve people. You are not going to the homeless shelter to, fee to feed the homeless. You are going to serve them because they are people. And I know some of you are saying right now, oh yeah, Father Adam is right. Yeah. And then what do you do? Your husband comes home from work or now he's stuck at home, you know, because he can't go to work and he's at home. And what do you do after you've prepared a meal? You say to him, sit down, I'm going to feed you. I can just hear you all saying that right now. Or you say that to your children too. Sit down, y'all. Oh, y'all sit down right now because I'm going to feed y'all. Okay, that's my southern accent for you all. You didn't know I was from the south. I am from the south of Poland. <laughs> it's about our attitude. What is our attitude? You love God? You can't see God. At least, you know, well, if you do see God... You don't need a priest. You, you probably need a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
The Bible says nobody's ever seen God. We don't see God, but we see other people. So you got to love people. And when you love people, you love God. And loving means serving. To know God is to follow Him. To love God is to serve God. Are you one of those that knows God? Or are you one of those that loves God? Now, I want to point out something and end with this from the life of our mother Mary. Mary, let me point let me point this out to all of you. Let me this is chapter 1 of uh, Luke's gospel. And Mary in those days after she heard about her cousin Elizabeth being pregnant, in those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah. And she greeted Elizabeth, her cousin. I have a question. Was Mary told by the angel to go and visit her cousin Elizabeth? No, she wasn't. The Bible says she arose. She got up. And in haste went to be with her cousin Elizabeth, to visit her because she was a servant. She had the servant's heart. She didn't have to be told to go and serve and to take care of her cousin Elizabeth who was pregnant in advanced in age. She needed help. And the other thing I want to point out to you is it says Mary went here in the hill country. Do you understand? Have you ever been to the Holy Land? I have. It's hilly. It's a desert. Do you know how long she had to walk? Took her days. Okay, there was no Uber back then. Okay. <laughs> All right, she didn't take no taxi. All right. She, did, she had to walk pregnant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Morning sickness. Mm-hmm. It wasn't easy, was it? Of course it wasn't. It was not easy for Mary. There were a lot of wild animals there in the desert as she was walking to visit her cousin. There were a lot of snakes. Yeah. You know, in your quest, in your call to serve in this life, you're surrounded by a lot of snakes that maybe ah, want to take a bite out of you and a lot of wild animals. Mm -hmm. And a lot of tongues. Mm -hmm. You got to put up with a lot to serve your family, don't you? Oh, yeah, it takes a lot. You have to put up with a lot to serve your husband. I know. And your children. It ain't easy, is it? It wasn't easy for Mary either. It's not easy to be a servant in church. Yeah, church people. Uh, it ain't easy. Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. And yet I do it. It's not easy. God didn't promise it to be easy. God promised to be with us. God promised to accompany us. Mary did it because she loved God. Behold, she said, I am the servant of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. That is my prayer for you as I bless you today and always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.